We interrupt our program to bring you a special broadcast. The German news agency, Transocean. Here's another late development, and this news keeps coming in as we're talking here. If you guys are watching this right now, it's probably a whole new day, a whole new week for you. Yeah. Me and Eric have been here for a while. It's it's about to be one o'clock in the morning. We're tired. Yeah. We're, we're tired, but we still got a lot to talk about. Yeah. And this is gonna just be a catch-up seg segment. There's no timers. There's no limits. We're not so <laughs> not so just, but we haven't had a chance to just really just sit back and chit chat, bruh. Like. Work. Work. Life. Yeah, yeah. I just finished putting the comic book in all colors. And like, I don't know if you've been seeing this, but like, this is page 44, man. Like, that's the final base color. Everything else is like outro and just hit green and everything turns green. Like, yeah. the hard part is over. And life is not like getting easier. But there's a few things like that been on my mind. Hey, did you hear about this? Uh, what do you think about the Seahawks canceling Colin Kaepernick's visit because he wasn't he didn't determine this protest was over yet? I mean, they're using they're dangling a carrot in front of him, playing in the NFL because they know he wants to play. He put out on social media that he still wants to play. They know they just signed RG three. And all this stuff's done. I thought purpose. he went to the... Yeah, RG3 got signed by the Ravens a one-year deal mm -hmm. for a few million dollars. But they, the reason why they did that for RG3 is to try to lure Colin Kaepernick back into football. They don't actually see any worth for RG3. They know he's not really capable of, of leading a team to, to any wins, really. They really just need to get they they, they signing boning worth uh, from him because, like, He's he's a bust in my eyes. I mean, flat out, absolute overrated, and he's again, he's a kid that lacks emotional intelligence. But the thing is, Kaepernick. Shout out. Yeah, he <laughs> he. Again, Kaepernick. He's in the same boat. The thing is, you're suing the NFL, and they extend you an offer to come try out, but it's contingent upon you're not suing the NFL because if you're suing the NFL, you're essentially suing the owners. That's what the suit's about. The owners are colluded against you. Hey, but he's getting offers, and you, that's a great point. Like, I didn't even think about that. Like, how how easy would it be for him to simply acknowledge it, get in, but just never stop the conversation? Your protest doesn't even have to be visible at this point. Because you not being present still signifies what you're doing. One. Two, when they come see you in a post game, you could either talk about the game. You're the quarterback, mind you. So you have you throw four touchdowns. Imagine if you threw four touchdowns and the only thing you were talking about is today in the news a four uh today in the news a twenty year old man was given twenty scholarships to 20 uh, schools in our country, and Fox News host called him obnoxious. Uh, how'd you feel about the interception that the defense collected? Great. Did you also know, like, you could transform and transcend it because you're talking about the sport. You, you're feeling, you're feeling your obligation. Mm -hmm. They can't dictate how you answer questions. They can't. So, so he has, so I feel like he has made his, well, anyone who knows, sees Colin Kaepernick, will know innately that this is a person who stood up for something. At this point, get in, get your money. And not only get your money, get the platform back. Because I'm not watching football till he either plays another game or the NFL admits that they're wrong. And neither one of those is going to happen. So, um, and and I guess the, my, the issue is people made fun of what's that guy's name? Hot Dog, who ended up getting $89 million from the league. And went off and, you know, did some education in this city. I mean, he took several million dollars and started a, a fund to educate kids on how to interact Is with Is it police. Bennett? 
Nah, not Michael Bennett. That dude's a chew. She's a hippie. I don't. I'm sorry. Or Martel. Which one? Because there's two of them. Are you talking about the defensive tackle? Yeah. No, I'm not talking about Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett is a hippie. He is a, a weed smoking hippie. He has no end game, and he just wants to see smoke. And that's my issue with a, even with Colin. It's like it's not that I have a, not that I don't understand why you took me. But if you can do something like that, you better have an end game. Like, all this stuff should have been worked out in your mind. Like, you should have seen all this stuff coming. You should have known all these things were going to happen before you even did them. And you should have already had counter moves against all that stuff. The The lawsuit for collusion just seems like you're grasping straws. He, I mean, you don't think he has a case? Like, how how is he going to prove that? He's yeah. going to have to... How is he? Is the judge going to grant him... You know, a subpoena to summons all the all the email records from all these. Like, what actual proof does he? If he could, if this is a chapter seven discrimination. No, well, he can't. He can't. uh, How is he being discriminated because of his race? Because his personal beliefs. Personal beliefs. There's plenty of people in the league. Uh, He's he's exercising his First Amendment right, and they're punishing him for it. Isn't that a violation? It's affecting their bottom line. They're doing what's best for business, just like any other company would do for business. Ah, uh, you caught me with the catch twenty two. Corporate America is not a person because you know they tend to do this a lot. Corporate America is not a person. Corporate America is a machine. Machines cannot be charged to, as they have feelings because they don't. But you know, we give tax breaks to companies because you know. Think of the families. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and let's, let's be perfectly honest. 80% of the people who are watching a football game don't even look like Colin Kaepernick. The people who are paying money to go to the stadium. They, I have a responsibility to my constituency and the, those who patronize my business to make sure that it is a fun, safe, and enjoyable experience. And if these people don't find it fun, safe, and enjoyable, they won't spend one hundred and sixty-five dollars on a on a ticket to sit in the nosebleeds or pay twenty-five dollars to park or eight dollars for a beer that is only twelve ounces. I mean, I'm just saying. And so, am I going to keep Colin Kaepernick, or am I going to find someone else to replace him? And look, they've already found a viable replacement for for him in two years in Jimmy Garoppolo, and they just lucked upon that. I mean, that's a blessing from above from uh, Belichick, but. That's beside the point. They were gonna if they, if they didn't have them, they would have drafted Darnell or Rosen. Around, or, you know what I'm saying? Like Baker Mayfield, they had plenty of options this draft to get somebody that was good, and that's what they were working. But do you not think it's strange that uh, the boy Johnny Johnny uh, Manziel is getting all this pub? I, I I saw like he he got to go to a spring trial at OU or wherever he went to school. The difference between Colin Kaepernick. And Johnny Manziel, besides the obvious physical appearance, is what Johnny Manziel was out of the league for. A bad attitude and a drug problem. The same thing that Josh Gordon was allowed to come back in. Mm-hmm. So, so well, we can't we can't got me. You got me. we can't we can't use that. We yeah. know the NFL accepts druggies. They've been accepting druggies all this time. Half shoot, half the uh, Cowboys crew were known. Druggies. Speaking of cowboys, now in the nineties, back in the nineties, we knew Eric Williams and well, and uh, what's my man Michael Irvin and all these boys. We know they had it. They own little <laughs> side house. You know that movie, uh, that TV show, The Rock, doing that idea about the playhouse. Yeah, he got that from the Cowboys. Eric Williams and Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith, all of them had a little playhouse, and that's where they used to take the women and do the dope. sell drugs. Like we know that. We know that. I know. I know that for a fact because. My my dad's brother, you uh, ran a car, sh- uh, a, a auto body shop where he used to check out all their cars. Dion, Emmett, and Eric Williams, and all them jokers, Nate Newton, all them boys, Charles Haley, all used to come get their car done over the south side by my uncle. So I know. I mean, same thing. Michael Jordan house had, had a house yep. across the street from his regular house yep. where all his fun went on, where his wife never went into. I'm just saying, like. We know that drugs is a is a forgivable thing in the, in the business of the NFL. You you know that firsthand. I know you know that firsthand. Whether or not you're willing to I'm here say to, anything remotely I'm, about it, I'm just here to tell of, you. I'm here to tell you. Allegedly, 
uh, you don't have to. You don't have to buy your drugs in the NFL. Mm-hmm. They they'll provide them for you. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. So we already know they for, for, they forgive that stuff. What they don't forgive is political outbursts. They don't, especially when it affects their bottom line and the people who are patronizing their business. You cannot attack the flag. You cannot attack veterans. You cannot attack women if you play in the NFL. I mean, think about it. The months that they celebrate things, they have Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They have freaking Military Month. It's when all these people are wearing all this camo stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they have October where all these women are wearing the breast cancer or October, November, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't pay attention to it. But they wear the pink they wear pink shoes and pink gloves and pink towels and pink headbands. I mean, they they do these. These are two causes in the NFL you cannot touch. You cannot touch the women's and breast I cancer. I think month. this year they're doing autism and prostate too. So See? so they're definitely reaching out. The NFL is NFL understands two things. Um, one, they're not making as much money mm-hmm. because the TV shows, the TV. Are, I watch if I have to watch a football game, I can watch it on Facebook now because some some idiot's going to be streaming it. If you aren't willing to evolve, because I, out of all the football teams, I think the most liberal. Is the are, is the Seahawks? If you can't make it at the Seahawks on a political front, they released Martel Bennett, uh, uh, Michael Bennett, Michael Bennett recently. I think that was more of a cap to make cap room, just in case they wanted to go hit wires in the draft and buy up. But at the same time, I think the NFL needs to evolve. Without a shadow of doubt, you're. Your old monies, like everything else in America is changing. And the only people who seem to have a problem with it are old white men. That's always going to be the case. The, the older, the oldest generation is always going to have a, be resistant to change because what got them into power and what's keeping them in power is the way that they think. Speaking of old white men, <laughs> uh, Donald Trump is having a really difficult time right now. He has a lot, a lot of things going on in his life. So much shit is going on in the White House, it's hard to talk about. Uh, the ex-CIA director, FBI director, James Comey, uh, wrote a book. It's already out now. It's so soft. I heard some excerpts from it. I'm like, this man's kind of pathetic. And he wrote, I feel like... He, it it definitely made me look at James Comey different because the the things he, he attacking someone's weight, physical appearance, those this is not political. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't care how small he said when he shook his hands. He was surprised how small they felt. I don't care about that. Now you're basically trying to attack his man. Yeah, like I need and that's you low key, not even like right in front, out front, direct. I need you to speak on things that matter. Russia, collusion, election. You were the CIA director who was given a job, a responsibility. And is and regardless if you like Hillary Clinton or not, James Comey coming out six days before the election and saying that there might be some evidence of Russian conspiracy ruined her. It ruined her. She was not going to win, but the way she lost is very clear that an outside source helped. So, now that our White House is in utter turmoil and we're pushing the limits with Russia, like, he's legit on Twitter saying if we're going to we're gonna fire missiles and Russia's made it clear any missiles sent towards Syria will be destroyed. That's... Crossing the battle, the battlefield line at that point. Are we afraid of red? Like, what is what is what is the situation with Trump? Why can't he just be a boring president? I think that's so many things. First of all, again, he lacks emotional intelligence. Yeah, <laughs> number one, that's that's the main thing. Second of all. 
Buddy will not put the cell phone down, and nobody is saying to take the cell phone away from the yeah, This can't be as difficult as it seems. No, and, like, I'm sorry. Me and Secretary of State, I'm walking in. Yo, I'm, I'm, and I'm bringing two brawlic dudes with me. I'm like, phone, run it. I'm going to need it. I don't care if he's a president or not. You no more, no more cell phone. No more freaking Twitter. I was like, why does the world? Kn- we have a meeting, and five seconds after the meeting, the whole world know what we had a top secret clearance meeting about. You're in, you're a buffoon, and you need to sit down. They're not texting or tweeting anymore. I don't care about your feelings. You want to, you want to tell somebody how you feel about the situation? Call me. That's why you pay me. I'm here to protect you, and I'm here to protect this republic from stupid presidents. He's destroyed. He has single-handedly destroyed the Republican Party. You know what? I would venture to say that he <laughs> that he is only pissed off the spineless, lily-livered idiots that are left in the Republican Party. All the ones who secretly feel like Trump feels. But didn't really have anybody to put a battery in their back. He's emboldened those people to come out of the woodworks. They are like roaches that have come out. And as soon as they come out, uh, Democratic boots, like, like the Democratic in New Jersey when they were trying to fix the gerrymandering and they brought it up to the Supreme Court, this, this state rep really thought he was about to gerrymander. And for all y'all that don't know what gerrymandering is, basically when you draw county lines, to show uh, a bias in the voting pattern. Say, for example, if it's supposed to be 50-50, you draw the county lines show that it shows 49-50 for red or blue, whatever. And basically, when important elections come down to a draw, they use the majority vote, which will always go in the line of red. So this... This state representative just doesn't care. He said he was telling them no. Now, like, the Supreme Court is writing him stern letters saying, like, don't make us come arrest you, bro. And he says, do what he want. Like, he, as if, because he saw Trump bail out Arpaio, Trump is like this. And that's why I think it's really important that we nail Trump immediately, like, quickly and effectively. I don't want him to pardon people. I want to see him go. I want to see him get locked first, then punish everybody else. He won't get locked up, and I think that's where we we keep holding on to that. You don't think Mueller has the capacity? Because right now, his lawyer they raided his lawyer's apartment. He's not that sloppy. You don't think? Come on now. This is this. Do you mean you mean to tell me? Is First of all, as irrational as some of the decisions he's made, it mainly has to do with Twitter. You don't think that he would have taken inventory of himself. To- this is a person that doesn't know how to tweet correctly. He, he uses words like kofifi and like, no, I don't think Trump. Now, Trump, no. His Michael Cohen, his lawyer, because we, we predicted this, remember? We predicted this weeks in advance. And I have, we're going to make another prediction. If Trump fires, Trump is going to fire either Rosenstein, the CIA director, or Bob Mueller. If he fires any one of them, he has to be impeached. That would have been the second time he has directly affected a federal bipartisan investigation from the DOJ on the on the 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 executive office there's no excuse for that he he, he, he must he, he he won't fire them he's going he, to fire one of them i don't think so because this is the other possibility that is that's going to play itself out if he was to do it he'd do are it sh- at, are we shaking on this listen before we yeah, shake okay. listen to what i'm saying all right so remember earlier we were talking about there's 30 republican seats up yeah and where those seats are, the Democrats have a really good chance of stealing those seats. And the Democrats don't need that many seats to take over the House. Mm-hmm. They don't need that many seats. They need 43 seats to take it over. So you mean to tell me, and this is 43 seats they can easily win to be the majority. And once they're in the majority, they've already stated, they stated this this week, as soon as we're the majority, all the sanctions are coming out of the woodworks. 
But they flat, flat out said they were going to be so aggressive with sanctions and investigations that they they were going to get him up out of there. That's what they said. So it doesn't matter what he does. If he if he fires in either one of those guys, it looks so suspicious right now. You don't think that the voters would go vote for these people who want to investigate him? He has to play it very safe right now. He just has to get through November and hope that he's still the majority. And then he can do what he wanted to do. Yeah. Why do you think Paul Ryan is staying until January? Why did he just flat out leave right now? Doesn't make any sense. If he left right now, he would prove that he was a liar, which was he... He was all about the people and representing the people. And furthermore, he didn't want to be primaried. Because if you lost your primary as the winner of last year's election, it just doesn't look good. That blue wave is dangerous. And I don't know. Maybe I'm over politics now. And like, like we said, it's fucking late. <laughs> yeah. So what else the fuck are we talking about, Eric? We in the catch up round. I we, mean, we are we are running on fumes. I don't know, man. I don't, I'm usually up this late anyway. And lately, I've been going to sleep super early. Like the three nights, Ayla has called me. Me and Ayla got into actually a little bit of a spat. Uh, oh man, is, is it over the podcast? It not over the podcast, but over her channel, mm-hmm. and just like that, should probably upset. She it, actually she won't listen to this point, so she won't. She won't hear this, so it won't really matter. <laughs> but, like, uh, you know I'm very particular about, like, channel. I manage her channel right now. And I manage our channel. You are you are very considerate about the editing. Eric cares, like, a lot about me editing. Like, he's concerned about time management. But I use it as my feng shui. Like, it's something I like to do. This analytical aspect of my life with the editing is calming to me. I enjoy it. And I enjoy editing her videos. Granted, she's not here when I edit her videos. So she has to take a leap of faith with it. Yeah. But from what you've seen, and like, I don't know if you've been to the channel. I'll even plug it. Go check it out, y'all. Proud Ayla. <laughs> Proud Ayla. Uh, check out the channel. You can, you'll see the videos I made for her and the ones she's made for us. And she's made a lot of progress. But there's a clear difference. I have two to three years of experience doing this. So there's a big difference in our in our editing abilities. But I'm a firm believer of, like, throwing yourself out there. When I post something, I post 50 people, 99 people to it. Because I want to see, every video I've posted for has clocked over 100 views. The one time I decided not to do it, it doesn't even get to 53. And I was like, hey, you didn't promote this. You didn't, like, sell it up. Like, what are you doing? Like, this is your thing. Granted, I was probably a little bit more put peeve because that's my work. Mm Mm-hmm. Regardless of whose channel it is, it's still work I'm putting into your channel. And I mean, that's that's my friend, that's my girl. Like I love her to death, but she's not above reproach. Mm-hmm. So like I gave her to her. She's just she said she was having a lot of things going on in her life right then and there. There, so I just took it as is. I uploaded the next video. She didn't even like edit that one with the title, so she just put it on private. So that's two videos that you know got neglected but in my perspective granted she says there's a lot of things going on in her life right now but in my mind you know i didn't put a video out this week and the reason why is for our channel i put out one for the stranger thing combo but there wasn't one for eto the reason why is because i wasn't here i physically wasn't here Mm -hmm. and that distance that thing made me so angry that i said maybe it's time to buy a laptop hero because you can't have this you now know how to hack it. So that mm-hmm. shit was just like irritating me. Like, nah. And again, that's why I said, like, man, all the responsibility, like, editing the videos, man. Like, I mean, I'm all understanding, but I was like, if there's a way for us to sync all this stuff up and do it live and there really not be a need for editing, then we just get it and have it all the camera synced and we just switch it and do it all live and then record it, you know, bounce down at the end and we just post it up. And, I'd be cool with it, you know. Uh, plus, again, that's more efficient for us. Ain't no more clap syncing, ain't no more nothing, everything. Yeah, I really enjoy those aspects because it's a real production. Yeah. Because even on a movie set, mm-hmm. on three, one, two, three, action, and yeah. <laughs> like the clap sync yeah. is part, it makes it feel like it's a real production. And it is a production. It is. Because you guys are watching this probably six weeks after we put this up. Because, like, the last video I'm about to post. 
you weren't here. You had to hear for a month ago. And part of that is because of the scheduling and we, you know, we traditionally want to, but we just got better with our time. We realized we were running out of time. Like, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's legitimately a, a drag sometimes coming up every week to talk about something. Yeah. So when you get together, you plan your shows and recordings, you get your guests in there, and you pull in an extra few hours versus, you know, not pulling in those hours yeah. and then you know, scrambling at the end of the week to try and get something recorded and put on the show. Yeah. So, like, material and content is all relative, but, like, as we get better at this and, like, even when we, like, if we have to part ways, like, then at that point, there's not even, like, the video The video aspect of it kind of goes up in the air because yeah. uh, we're not about to sit here and record a Skype conversation. I mean, I'm, I'm down for it. I would, though. And you know what? And let it be known, Eric is the reason why we have the video right now. That's it. That is the only like because the first two podcasts, first three, <laughs> they were audio, only. The audio only, and that's yeah. and I listen. That's how I listen. To, and Guillermo will tell you this. Like, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Guillermo because Guillermo really wants to volley with you. He loves. He would love to debate you. I mean, he, 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 if he wants to make his we, way down here, we, 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 we can. We, need we to might get have on to. The horn, we huh? might have to get him on the Skype call. Hey, listen, and do it that way. I mean, but well, he was like, he better wear, he better wear his big boy pants that day. <laughs> <laughs> I think, if anything, I think he more, he's more falls in line with your, with your, with your chain of thought. He's a great young man who has like the potential of the world, and he's definitely accomplished so much. Married, house, like he's got a great job lifestyle but he wants to live he wants to do more and I'm supposed to actually do his logo before I close my eyes today I'm gonna fucking draw a little bit on his logo I don't care what it takes I feel like I'm holding him back nah he he you know if he if he's connected with you man he's he's about something I know Hero's one of the few people I know that doesn't have slouches around him you know so I am the slouch of my group (laughs) (laughs) nah it's it's just it's like I don't know it's and you was telling me about like people that you've met and like how who we gonna bring on the podcast like we were supposed to go to NWA but you know like hey kid hey kid that's a pause yeah pause. everything goes on pause with the kid yeah. so uh, I I I'm, I hope his wife uh, isn't upset that I haven't like held his uh, their child yet I spent a, so much I felt like I spent a lot of time with them when they were pregnant mm-hmm. so I'm just thinking to myself like I'm never here though why come time isn't fair hey listen cause time forces you to to figure out what's the most important and, and give attention to that in that moment and the thing is you can never go back and get that time back so whatever decision you make is etched in eternity and you just you gotta be okay with that, you know. And people ain't gonna always accept it, but you gotta do what's best for you in the moment. What's really, what's really good is I'm thinking to myself as I'm like sitting here, like I have to go to that stupid meeting tomorrow. Like, you don't, you don't want to go encourage the young folks? It's not even that. It's it, it, I'm perfectly fine with going to go talk to them. It's the process of going to go talk to them. And then after it, what am I going to do? Like, it's... It's a Saturday at that. This is... That was that definitely should have been a Friday thing. Yeah, Friday at 2.30 in the afternoon type. Yeah, like, you take it somewhere Saturday away, that's a lot. And if I had really known, like, that's what it was going to entail, I would have been like, I'm, I'm good. But, I mean, what can we say? What yeah. what can we do? It's for the young It's for the young people. Hopefully, 10% of them will receive it. Because if you can save one, then it was worth it. Yeah. And that's really how I, I have to look at it. Save one, it was worth it. One is always worth it, but you know, I, I would like to take a dozen or so if I can. <laughs> I mean, that's just being honest, you know. Dude, what make what is this notion that we have that we have to do something about this? Why can't we be like the the bum ass generation before us? Because we hate we hate their because <sighs> they call they call us uh, 
What's the word that I'm trying to think of? Uh, entitled. I don't feel entitled at all. I feel like I've had to work for pretty much everything I had. Yeah, because you got blisters on your hands. I mean, yeah, right now I do. <laughs> I mean, my skin's feeling, but I mean, I literally physically have to work for everything I have. I don't get any free rides. Not to say that there hasn't been a couple of people come along inside helping. No, for the most part, I've had to rely on cunning and craftiness and stealth. Um, <laughs> and an absolute, um, suppression of who I truly am to a certain extent to get where I want to be and to appease certain individuals or put certain individuals at ease so that they are not so turned off by how I really, how I really would like to be, like say what I want to say, you know, just, you know, I mean, I'm, I was having a conversation to, to this morning with my wife about about it, just like you know, I was talking about you know somebody I love dearly, and how I can't really be as honest as I want to be because I said if I do, then that me and that person aren't gonna have a relationship anymore because they just don't like me that way. Quick question: Do you have a PlayStation Four? I don't have any video games. Yeah, okay, that was it. me and my friend Jay were uh, talking about for it, but it, go back to that. I'll talk about that later. Yeah, no, nah, I just you know, people don't people don't want the raw and I've had to learn over over time that there's certain parts of me that not everybody's gonna take, so I have to I I I'm be that way with those who can accept it and I'll just be Eric Light for those who can't. But Eric Eric Light seems to work well in the corporate environment, so Eric Light is what everyone gets. Now if Eric had, you know, was in a position where he had enough authority, he would just be you know, a hundred percent unfiltered from concentrate. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm you gonna like, get this ten percent? I mean, listen. I mean, <laughs> it'll be it'll be the best worst ten percent of your life. I'm gonna tell you that right now. And and I was like, just thinking, like, how much of, like, how much of, how much of, do people really truly pay attention to their approach? They they don't. I realize, especially from being 31 years old and working, you know, a few in a few corporations, that people are absolutely oblivious to their approach. And even when they try a politically correct approach, it just comes off as offensive nine times out of ten. Like somebody calling you, if somebody looks at your old resume and sees you have two degrees, and they ask you to come in to take a spelling test, that person doesn't respect you. Oh, facts. You, why do you insult the person with a, who holds a, a higher degree than is required for the, your job, Miss HR lady? I mean, why do you call this this man to come in and take a spelling test? It's like they're just oblivious. And saying instead of saying say a spelling test, and say, "Hey, man, would you mind taking a you know some you could have danced it up an, a little bit. and some kind of aptitude, yeah." For, for let me just see who, where your skill set is. It's like, hey, I've seen you haven't been in the field for a couple of years. I'd like to see where you, where your knowledge and your skill set is. You mind taking, you know, taking you answering a few questions. That's what's wrong with we. We're at this point. We're relying on binary things to dictate uh, human assessments. Like because human beings and have gotten to the point where they they think they can afford to be lazy, and so it, I hate the social media approach to even getting a job. Even now, like I know, I know some people who work in at an organization, a nonprofit, and the way the nonprofit hires management is not necessarily based on skill set. When it's actually a skills based job, they hire based on credentials. But then they get upset when those who have the credentials or check the boxes on the paper don't actually have. And in the words of the HR person, the 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 people component. So the people component, the the words that was given to me was, you know, something to the effect of, hey, Eric, you've you've got the people component. That's the hardest part for the majority of people, especially management to get. They're not very good with people. Most of the management they have isn't good with people. But you have the ability to influence people and to get people to listen to you. You have the people component. What you don't have is the piece of paper to validate the skill set we know you already have. Oh, 
I said, so let me get this straight. You want me to go into $34,000 of debt to get a piece of paper only that only validates the skills and, and talents and abilities you know that I already inherently possess. And I'm even though I'm the most qualified, you know, physically and mentally and emotionally qualified, I'm not the most quote unquote scholastically qualified, therefore I get passed over. The There's no and anytime you walk into an HR department and they tell you you're not qualified, you just have to say President Trump. <laughs> like there's no way what uh, name a ge- okay besides bomb disposal IEDs heart surgery name or 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 drilling offshore no because you don't need a degree to drill offshore you don't so everything is about practice mm-hmm. because if even if you're a heart surgeon if I made you do 10,000 practice heart surgeries I'm pretty sure you would You're an expert at that point. You'll be pretty damn good at it. You're an expert. Even if you've never read a book on it, if you just watch someone do it 10,000 times and you practice 10,000 times, you're an expert. And it baffles me that, like, look at how... You wonder why kids can't pay attention in class? Look at how mundane education is. You sit in a... Like, education, you get off, you go to work... You wake up at the same time as your parents. You go to work. The only difference is you get out at 4 and they get out at 5. They're training you to go from the classroom to the cubicle to the grave. Mm-hmm. You're always in a box. Your school's a box. Your home's a box. Your job, you work in, you're a box within a box. And then when you die, they put you in a box. It's all about <laughs> the boxes with these people. And they're not telling you that. And, you know, I, I've i had conversations, candid conversations with HR people about this. So, well, you don't, you can't, you're not qualified for this job because you don't have this. I was like, you should go back to school. I said, so wait a minute, I'm going to go back to school for four years and spend thirty to $60,000 on a degree in hopes of getting maybe a twenty to $30,000 a year raise. Right. I was like hundred thousand dollar de- a debt for forty thousand dollar job. I said I'm I would be an idiot. I was like I was like the man isn't adding up in my brain. Not only am I losing the time, but I'm still again I have to wait for a position to be available if it's available at that time, or I have to look at, at applying at other companies. I said so even after I've gotten this piece of paper, there's not a guarantee that I'm gonna find a job immediately in my field to, to recoup the money that I lost investing quote unquote in this piece of paper that now validates what you already know about me. I was like, it is absolute idiocy. And I said, this is why these companies are run so poorly is because they refuse to put the right people in the in the proper seat because they don't have some kind of they don't check a box on a piece of paper. I was like, it's absolute foolishness. And I made a I was starting to, you know, really make decisions in my mind, do I want to be affiliated with an organization that recognizes the skills and the talents? But want to elevate me to the position that they know I've not only I rightfully earn and I deserve, but they won't give me, they won't give me what I've earned because I don't check a scholastic box. But everybody respects me. Nobody, but, you know dude, I, mean? I mean, I I hear you hundred percent. But coming as coming from the opposite spectrum, do you? Feel, I mean, regardless of how. You want to look at it. A job is a job, and it can mm-hmm. be filled. It needs yes. to be filled, whether it's by the correct person or the wrong person. It needs to be filled. If you then this is this is a, and this is a character gate. This is me gauging your character now. Uh, so I might seem a little. Uh, right. Do you feel the best person should get the job? The best person. The define best. The best person. The best person by definition and description of the work required of them. And definition of what the facility of the op- of the business is looking for. Yeah, if we're going by yeah whatever the basic what you say whatever they put on the job requirements and whatever skills it takes to do the job, if that's the best person. Okay, and that is a that's a that's a bullheaded that's a bullheaded strong ass statement to make because it, to an extent you have to then acknowledge and accept that you might not be that person. 
I mean, you, yeah, if you don't meet the job requirements, yeah, then in the company's eyes, you're not the best person. So, so how, like, because I remember you started, uh, not even started, but back on the previous podcast, where you are talking about emotional intelligence, you talk about how important it is for African-American women to be highly educated so they can get into these positions that can... Because black people, black men, you don't, like, we're on the bottom of the totem pole. So if the black woman is being looked at as an equal to the white man, you get to sleep with one of those two. Like, you need to get on that woman's good side. Like, you you, you need a queen in your corner. You need a queen in your corner because they open doors. Shawnee opens doors for you. She's oh, giving definitely. you opportunities. She definitely. To, like, walk away from things that most people don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. So you have to be humble and accept those things. But I am a, as a person, like, who looks at my degree and get, and I'm constantly being told I am overqualified as an excuse for not wanting to pay me. Or, let me use an example, Uh, one of these lovely interviews I went on, I was offered a manager position. Mm -hmm. Went in. They flew me out, bought me a $30, $30 steak with all the steaks and fixings for it. I don't know about you guys, but $30 feeds two people in my life. <laughs> and so I just ate a $30 steak before I got the sides. And I got was told, you have all the qualifications, you meet all the, you checked all the boxes, but we're going to go in a different direction. It's two weeks later, they fire that person and call me back. Am I not? Am, am I wrong for asking for twenty thousand extra? No. But they declined that and gave me another position that they wanted me to fill. So they knew they had, had to pay you, but they didn't want to pay you. So they're just finding any way to bring you into the organization. So they because they know that so they can go. Hey, hey, hero! Oh, you mind showing Buddy over here how to pump that kidney or how to? Hey, show the, so so and so how to go talk to this surgeon or. Can you can you just come on up here? We really love your input. You know how they're gonna jazz it up and make it as corporate as they want, but they feel since they got you on the payroll and in the building that they can extrapolate information from you for for nothing instead of giving you a position that you interviewed for in the first place. What's the difference? What's it? What is the difference there? Absolutely, the most qualified person, but on paper. But what was it about? The way you interviewed that some people did not like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, you know, it, I, I immediately put it in their face about, like, my hair, for example. Mm -hmm. Ever since that medical school interview that I went on where the doctor was like, doctors don't have hair like yours. And I said, cool story. I plan on changing that. And he was just adamant. But it began to irritate me because that means, once again, and this goes back to my father, the hero, no matter how hard you try, people won't like you. Before I said a word, this guy looked at me and had an idea about what I was mm -hmm. and what I was about. So when people see me now, I hope they see the most terrifying aspect of me. With the hopes of when they then decide to speak to me, they come to terms with the fact that they're bias but it happens so quickly now in people's mind that you don't even get to bathe bask in it mm. like you quickly realize that oh wait he's not going to steal my wallet you don't even sit there and think about damn i just thought he was going to steal my wallet how what's wrong with me like why wasn't that something that went through your mind but you know what what can you do like all you can do is try your best to represent a better version of yourself yeah and uh, unfortunately, there's some people just by sheer ignorance, and it's mostly their fault. So I, I I like to be fair and say society or the culture, you know, is a certain way in certain communities where they have little to no interaction with people that look like you or I, or even if they were, they had access to people that look like us, they never took it upon themselves to find any common ground. So they just assume this person is whatever the image of TV or film has said that they were. But if we watching Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's inherently a problem. Like I see that 
a lot, especially in corporate. It's like nobody wanna wants to touch the race thing. Nobody wants to tackle it. If you bring it up, then you're a, you're in a, you're a problem. You must be eradicated, especially if somebody looks like you are not. I and we point out to people their inherent. You know, prejudices. I'm here to tell you, if someone tells you there's a racist, there's racist things going on or prejudice things going on, and you're not that person's color, you can't say no, there isn't. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> yeah. You have to look at it. Okay. But, I mean, our podcast is, is definitely evolved and grown. Yeah. Like, legit, we've been sitting here talking for... Just shooting this breeze, to be honest, for I don't even know for how long, but it's like, that's what, I mean, we we have an obligation to yeah. get this information up, like, yeah. y'all deserve content, and I don't know if y'all have ever been around a real-ass conversation like this, so, I mean, you're going to get this work. I mean, that's facts, and I feel like people need to, to have somebody express stuff that, yeah, man, I was thinking that, I just... Didn't, didn't say it or really know how to say it now. Maybe listen to Hero and I talk. He's like, oh, I have an, you know, I have a, 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 a real intelligent, calm way of expressing something that I've been feeling for a while, you know, and I've come to, you know, terms with it. And here's another thing that Hero and I have learned from this, man. It's not about what people call you. It's about what you answer to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? People like to put labels on you all the time, especially... You know, young young brothers out here in the workforce, you're just getting out here, you're just getting started in your career. Maybe you're you've been in your career for several years now and you're you making plans on how to move and how to, you know, better yourself. A lot of people are gonna test you, a lot of people are gonna check you, especially if you're intelligent, especially if you look like us and you're intelligent and you're not overly emotional. It's always trying to find that button to press. So always gonna start with the black button. Then they're going to start with the woman button. Then they'll start talking about your sexuality and manhood. It's always these same little attacks. The way you dress, the way you carry yourself, the way you speak. It's always a little jab. It's always some kind of intimidation, you know? Especially if you if you, if you well put together. I, I, I got a young man right now that I know that he gets tested all the time by these boys because they want, their women want him, you know? You know? And he's, and, he's, and he's and a bum. Yeah. It's not a sly. Like, yeah. I, I had somebody say something in the comment section says, you really harbor on the race car. Hey, look. <laughs> I, if, if, if I have to sit here and defend myself with white people, then, then yeah, you know I'm probably saying something wrong. But, but my favorite thing to do is watch my white friends defend me. I'm an uncle. I'm an uncle to two white little girls in Gary, Indiana. I'm known as Uncle Hero. There is off. There is white as this off-white wall behind me. I don't have to justify my affection for those two girls. I love them to death. Why? Because their father it was a defining factor in my life. Who now watches over my nephew. Who plays on his baseball team. We've been family long before we had identity of each other. Mm-hmm. And he's never been ignorant enough to say, oh, I don't see color. Because that implies you don't see me. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, like, once again, it, it, it comes down to, once again, you, you said it. Per, can you, do you have a firm understanding and grasp of identity of yourself? Are you out here trying to prove why you're trying to boast and poke your chest out at me? Do you identify with yourself? Yeah. A lot of people can't do that. That's what we got this damn podcast for. I know. And we're trying to get people to understand that social media is is a distraction. It's for you to go on and look at somebody else's life and try and look at how they pump faking and you trying to go off and you and, and, and show the same thing. Like, and don't get me wrong, I'm all for people going on starting a YouTube channel, but the reason why you started a YouTube channel is because you saw ten people do something, you felt like you could do it too, yeah. and you wanted to have people follow you and you wanted all the you test yourself. Like, put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Put yourself out. Put a, Record a 44-minute podcast and get two views and see if you want to come back next week and do that shit. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, we here 15 episodes later. I mean, seriously. <laughs> man, we not out here. We don't have 10,000 views a week. I'm just saying, we, we lucky we get 100 views, 200 views a week. But for us, it's, we know at some point 
this will catch on and more people will watch. I mean, I just follow some uh, young lady and her husband. This chick's like a, a IFBB. Uh, yeah, she's not bodybuilding. She's physique. She's a physique. Uh, I don't. She trains. She's buff as crap. But her and her husband had a channel for a year, and they only have one point two thousand subscribers. So they got twelve hundred subscribers in a year, and they weren't even really posting consistently. And I was like, like we'll have to find a niche crowd, but a lot of it kind of revolves around the crowd that we're aiming at. Yeah, the black community is not strong in the YouTube world. No, and if you're a black person watching YouTube, you're more than likely female. And you're more than likely here for hair and makeup tutorials. Yeah, me and my wife watch workout videos, political videos. I watch sports highlights. Um, yeah, my wife's on there. But uh, and, and like somebody was asking me, other day, like, why keep up with the YouTube page if it's not benefiting? You? And I was like, it's just. A, I guess it's almost like a journal at this point. We log our experiences through this. Yeah. Like these are carbon dated to us. Like this is these are these are moments where of realness that you can't, you know, express in a book, I feel. Yeah. Like you get to see our faces. We look you square in the eye as a camera. Yeah. And you can see and you can gauge and judge us based on what you're looking at. Mm-hmm. You can tell I'm tired of shit. Yeah. But this is just what it takes. Like yeah. especially when everything else around you seems not to make sense. I mean, but again, like, I feel like this is a starting point for encouraging other people. Like, you were talking about your buddy back home. Now he's encouraged to start a podcast and talk about some real issues and be unfiltered. The words you said, what were the words, specific words you said we were, like, unfiltered or uncensored? Oh, yeah. He he was really just shocked at, like, how nonchalant we, we attacked each other. We were unfiltered. There's no, there's no, like, when we come to debate, we come to prove our point of view. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to humiliate you. Like, I could, I could have torn this dude in an argument to shreds, but all it would have done is like led into a spiral of non-cohesive rambling. And the first rule of Facebook is don't feed a troll. Yeah, and here I was talking about the one guy. I don't know if we talked about it now, but we think we maybe talked about it on another uh, episode that we did today about the guy on Facebook that he was getting an argument with. Me. It was a bunch of foolishness, but you know, it's it's the same thing with re- like religion, religion and um, military are off limits when it comes to debating. They they shouldn't be though. Like you're, and again, I don't like. And here I know is I'm I'm a I'm I'm I would consider myself pretty religious, but I'm not at to the point where I'm not rational. Like I'm sorry, murdering innocent people. If God told me to murder, I said no. First of all, that's not something that He would tell you to do. Uh, like let's just be let's just be real. Second of all, if you're using your religion to justify your actions, that's probably who you already are anyway, and that's the best thing you could do to to justify. The, the wickedness that's already in your heart. Don't hide behind that book and say the book motivated you to be that way. No, you were already like that. You know, it's not what goes, it's not what goes into you that defines what, what's what comes out of you. What's coming out of you, out of the abundance of your heart. Like all these things are things you have intended to do. And you're just looking for uh, a, a, a valid excuse. Yeah. That's it. And, I, and I, I'm not with it. And I don't, I don't say number two, you don't use your religion to uh, validate your political stances. I was like, I have plenty of political stances that have absolutely nothing to do with the Bible. I have religious views that are completely separate from my political views. It, what, what is, I, don't, I mean, I get, I've never asked you this, but I feel like it, it was, uh, it would be a really good defining moment for is what, what are your do, views on that procreation thing? What do you mean, procreation? Should, should uh, women be allowed to have charge of their reproductive organs? I am anti-abortion, but I am pro-choice. And did you hear that, guys? He's just said both of them at the same time. I wonder why? Because it's practical. I would be against abortion if you, as an adult, 
slid into a female between her legs just because you didn't want to say, time out, let me run to the corner store real quick, grab rubber. That's that's not possible. That's not something you should be excusing. You There's too much technology in the world today. You don't even have to leave the house to get a condom. You can order it on Amazon. Uh, favor, uh, somebody will bring it to you in 15 minutes. There's no excuse for not getting a hat on your gym. Number two, women right now, unfortunately, um, a lot of guys would miss out on sex if they said, I want to use a condom. But women, are, I'm finding men and women nowadays aren't really into condoms. It's like, so men, until you get a pill that can uh, make you momentarily uh, sterile, you don't have really any control over the the reproductive rights if you wanna if you wanna have sex with a woman. So either you do one of two things: don't have sex with a woman who who has a problem with you using a condom, or a woman that you're not familiar enough with and making sure that she's on contraceptive, whether it's a pill, an IUD, if that's what she so chooses, uh, Man. patch or whatever it is. Man, go get, get the condom because I know you know yourself. I, I don't trust me to pull a piece out the fucking oven. Like, hey, listen. <laughs> it ain't going. I, like, just you just have to be very self conscious. And I'm a firm believer in like, is pro like pro choice. Like, hey, it's your decision. But if I could, if I can talk to you, the truth of the matter is like, if I have a kid, if somebody knocks on the door and says, "Hey, this is your son," mm-hmm. I'm be like, "You got me." Yeah. What's your name, Toby? Like we got to change yeah. that. Well, I got personal feelings as to why I'm anti-abortion, and it's I, beyond the what I feel about what constitutes a life or not. The fact is that fifty percent of every black kid conceived in this country is aborted, and that bothers me. That bothers me very, very deeply because how much potential are we are we murdering because we were we 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 were irresponsible. The main function of sex is to procreate. The pleasure is absolutely secondary. Absolutely secondary. And in some cases maybe tertiary because, you know, a lot of a lot of what I found in sex is is even more beyond the uh pro- procreation is the, the actual bonding with, with the with that person. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? And uh, <laughs> that's the, for, for all y'all that don't gauge that, that's the situation where after you've had sex with somebody ten times, you still come back for war. Is it's no longer about sex, it's about the union and that bond that you have or that you happen to gain that certain level of intimacy mm-hmm. and being able to reacquire that over and over again mm-hmm. is a skill, it's a task, it's a testimony to your yeah. bond. So it does, man. And you know, I mean, so you know, I know a lot of people don't understand how somebody can be anti abortion and pro choice at the same time. But I, I do feel like whatever a woman has going on in her body is I don't want to pay for it as a, as a citizen. So if you want, if she wants to go out and have an abortion, again, that's her decision. We cannot legislate morality, and I'm saying it as a what what some people would consider a conservative, right wing, evangelical statement. I don't uh, believe that anybody has the ability to legislate their morality onto another person. Yeah, that's... And the Supreme Court rightfully ruled in the favor of women and their reproductive rights, but... Yeah, but I don't want to to be taxed to pay for that. I mean, but you're being taxed to pay for way way dumber shit. Oh, I agree. And I don't want to be taxed for that either, but I definitely don't want to be taxed for something like that. Well, I mean, we know why we're being taxed for it. It's because we don't have the proper education and the education feedback loop is as such. If you don't properly educate people on how to protect themselves, they won't protect themselves. If they can't protect themselves, then you'll be paying for them. Yeah, and I don't like Planned Parenthood. I mean, uh, you? Why not? I mean, Planned Parenthood is the it, back in the nineties when they were allowed to do their job. They were the source of information and proper resource, and we saw the greatest downfall in teen pregnancy. Today's culture, today's kids who learned about uh, protective services and uh, sex, uh, protective sex, have the lowest rate of pregnancies. It's today. not Planned Parenthood's job. Whose job is it to teach kids about their this? parents' job? Parent, you, parent, the same idiotic parents like parent. Be remember, like being a parent. There's no you don't have to pass a legal background. 
to be a parent. You don't have to pass a drug test to be a parent. Unfortunately. You don't have to be educated or approved, send in a resume to parent, be a parent. So it's almost, re- it's, and this is the opposite for me, like people. It is ridiculous for me to sit for me to sit here and say it's the parent's job to raise a child when the fact of the matter is they don't spend nearly as much time as they do the kid with the kid mm-hmm. as the public does, mm-hmm. and as a professional who is trained on how to raise a child, mm-hmm. relieving the responsibility of ki- a parent is a babysitter when their child is of age. Yeah, because. Unless you have other kids of experience and you've successfully proven that you can raise a kid that doesn't become a suicidal killer or a mass murderer or some type of idiot, mm-hmm. you you're not off. The, you're not cleared yet. You can't just have a kid. Mm-hmm. Like that's the same thing with uh, I think in Papua New Guinea or where is it at? They're not letting Ethiopia not letting foreigners rent their kids anymore. I mean, adopt their kids because you're just not qualified. No. No. Like the kid, did you hear the story about the family in New, from, uh, there's an iconic picture of a black boy hugging an officer crying. He was adopted by two white women who drove, the, who drove their car with three of the kids off the bridge. All six, I believe, and they're all black kids. Like, people are saying like the, the one of the wives were charged with domestic abuse and was arrested. And they believe that this was a attempted suicide by suicide homicide, and it's just tragic because this kid is now gone. Another another genetic trait gene clipped from the gear. Why? Why would you want to take that life? You don't almost want to, but. Given the circumstances and the situation, you have no choice but to give them the best outcome possible. Mm-hmm. And we have a trained facil- facilitated system that says that these kids are better off in a home that might not be perfect than in battery. Yeah. I hope that's still going. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. It was, it was, it was low. Uh, either way it goes, I mean, maybe we should just wrap up, but yeah. finish the chain of thought. Um, Basically, it's it's our responsibility to raise ours. Yeah. And not only that, to protect the situation, but more importantly, the government has trained systems put in place. So we need to take full advantage of that. Teachers are not just teachers. They are... It takes a village, right? It does. So it might as well bring them into the village because the kids are being at school two-thirds of the time of their awake. Yeah, that's a whole another a whole another issue that we're gonna have to tackle. Yeah, but for today we you know what we're gonna tackle, we're gonna tackle this this stop button. <laughs> Eric, where can they find us? What are we what are we doing? Man, we on on Instagram, we on Facebook, we on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook at the identity booth. And on Facebook at you know Eric got his his uh uh, Barry White smooth voice on one arm because we tired of shit. Oh yeah, man! And then you can find us on Project ET on YouTube, man. Hit the like button, subscribe, comment, hit the bell for the notifications. Man, we need everything. We need all the interactions. I want the YouTube pin, guys. I need three more, three more subscribers. We're gonna get them this week. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Somebody gonna sign up. Somebody gonna sign up. Shout out. Maybe I'll start shouting out my subscribers as they subscribe. Yeah. Uh, Clyde Scott, Chris Williams, y'all last two people to subscribe, so I appreciate y'all. Yeah. Um, this has been the Identity Booth. We, me and Eric, once again, we didn't have a talk. We was just talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we legit finished one podcast and <laughs> did like three more. And just sat here because we wasn't ready to get up yet. And if the video is still going, that's cool. But if it ain't, yeah. It is what it is. It is, man. Yeah, I will be seeing a teddy bear on eleven. <laughs> right now. You already know. But this is Hero, uh, as always, your host and uh, my co-host Eric. On the ones and twos, man, we greatly appreciate you guys identifying with us as we try to identify with you. It's been one hell of a ride. Um, look out for some more content. Hopefully, we'll get some uh, some. Uh, New interviewees 
right? Yeah. Is that the terminology? Yeah, we'll, we'll and we'll take them and we'll bring them into the booth and and we'll be high octane for that. Oh yeah, and we put them through the ringer. <laughs> That's how we do. We get to sit in the uncomfy chair, talk about uncomfortable things. We're two uncomfortable human beings. They, they knew what they were signing up for. Hey, you knew what you was getting when you came in the identity. All right, yo. This right. real. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. If this you can see me, I'm here. <laughs> Damn it. It's not bad though, because it's an hour and 40 minutes, so that's the tip right there.